Hi everyone, welcome to Being Youthful, episode 35. I am Kim Beegler. I am the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I'm sitting here in the mill today in Halsey, Oregon. And if you are new to the vlog, I own a wool mill, we are grass seed farmers, we have a fiber farm, and we just stay busy, and I like to share everything about what we're doing all over the place, making yarn, making hand spinning fibers, the fiber animals, it's just everything. So welcome, and if you're returning, thanks for coming back. Um, it's been two weeks, Wish is here, as you can see, and you guys, thank you so much for the orders that so many of you placed after the last episode. I was really, really blown away and appreciate it, and I hope everybody that ordered got their stuff and loved it. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you for the well wishes. I had my birthday since the last one. We made it, whoop. And it was really nice. Mitch and I spent a couple days just hanging out together. My mom and I hung out and got lunch on my birthday and went shopping a little bit. And it was just, um, I, I was gone from the mill for three whole days. So that's crazy. It's crazy for me. So that was super fun and relaxing a little bit. And one more thank you is to Jennifer and Lauren, both of you, thank you so much. You both sent me cards in the mail in the last couple weeks and I was so excited to get both of them and so appreciate getting such kind words in the mail. And Lauren, just so you know, I literally have a card to send to you that I've had for like a month and one day soon, I'm gonna sit down and write it and you're gonna get it in the mail. So anyway, thank you to both of you. Um, always fun to open my mailbox and have something unexpected be there. So. And the last giveaway, the comments were so great, you guys. We talked about uh, who would be some people you'd want to have dinner with, dead or alive, that you would find fascinating or interesting or just whatever. And it was really fun to read. If you guys haven't read, you should go back and read some of the comments of other people. I think I went at it because I am listening to so many business podcasts. I went at it from that angle, but it was so interesting to see people not in this business world that I'm in. <laughs> talk about see it in a different perspective so right it's always interesting to see people's perspectives on things that didn't even occur to me so um thank you so much for commenting and there will be a giveaway again so okay farm update things are pretty mellow pretty mellow we have another maybe month month and a half until shearing so the sheep are starting to get big my guys that i only sure that i shear only well this year we're shearing some of them only once a year usually i do spring and fall lots of them have not been shorn since spring and they are big poofies which you'll see in the um, farm tour my lambs and two of my mamas got shorn in the fall and so they're poofy but i'd like them to have a little bit more on them before we shear them so um other than that everybody else is pretty good uh we're getting eggs like crazy, but we're also selling eggs like crazy. So that is working out well. And there's still enough for me to eat. So that's always nice. And otherwise, we're just kind of all over the place with the weather here in Oregon. This is what happens in spring. It's sun, rain, sun, rain, which makes the grass grow, which is wonderful. Um, and today it's supposed to be 60 something. And then at night it's like 33. So it's a little crazy. But um, since things are so chill on the farm, I'm just going to be quiet and go say hi to all the farm animals with you guys. So I'll be back in just a few minutes after we go do the farm tour. See you in a few. Okay guys, it's morning time. I don't know if I'll be able to do all this right now, but let's flip around and say hi to everybody. It's supposed to be 75 today, which will definitely be the warmest day we've had, which means Ruth's putting on a show, um, which means that if I try to come down later, I'll show you beautiful morning. If I try to come down later, they'll all be hunkered into the shade, not moving probably just trying to stay cool enough. So, I thought we'd come down now and at least see them in rare form when they're getting ready to be fed, the sheep anyway. The chickens are
ready for treats. All right, I'll be back in just a sec. All right, the chickens just got there. And these guys, you can see how plush and green everything is, but the sheep still desperately need their kibble. Hi, boys. The boys are over there. Kind of see a little... Maybe you can hear them over the sheep. So, June's getting her feet done today. Always a favorite, so I'll make sure I'm not going to be here. So, And she doesn't really let anybody handle her as far as getting the harness on and things like that. So I will. There's June Buck. Hi, June. So I will do that this morning so that Mitch can actually get her in. And wait for a sec. I have a new because we're over here. Sorry, guys. Try not to get you sick. I am trying to not get myself so in the middle of their craziness. So I fill some of the bowls and then let them in. There's Alexis in rare form. And they just will run around and I don't know what the system is for why they need to eat out of some of them. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. Go eat your food. But they apparently have a system to it. So that's good. Whatever works. Hi bub. Hi, Andy. There's Patrick. He's the one whose fiber is going up. Hi, guys. All right. We're going to go see the boys. Let you guys eat in peace. If I'm in here, it disrupts them more. Not that you can tell necessarily, but... What you doing, bud? He kind of gets pushed aside, so... He's looking for something else good. All right, she's telling us something. There's the boys, waiting. Here I come, boys. I know. And the chickens have taken to a new spot here in the corner. It's always exciting. When they take to a spot I've set up for them. There. No, she's going over there. So behind that tire, I kind of set a spot up, which, hi boys. All right, let me get them fed and we'll resume. All right, so boys are eating. And this hen is gonna come and see if she can get some kibble. She's a brave hen. Talk about smacking lips, man. And we're gonna fill up some waters. What are you doing, ma'am? showing off so she's gonna see if she can get some kibble I don't know that the boys share with the chickens very well they certainly don't share with each other well so all right I'm gonna uh, go feed June and get her harness on and we'll say hi to everybody over there all right so the girls are all happily eating away behaving to some extent Sheep are slowly trickling back out. It's warming up quickly. I already had to uh, take a layer off. And then it's supposed to start raining, I think, in another day again. So. So, hi handsome. Cuddle bug doesn't get to get off yet. I'm gonna show you, oh, I know, you're doing your dance. I guess you get a little bit of this, don't you? Always save him a little bit of there, kibble. So, I gotta show you June because she is in rare form. Looking like it snowed. June bug covered in her pine stuff. And this 
she there's still some the the younger weathers are really amorous even though or they have enough hormones apparently to make them just a smidge amorous see there's some humping going on out there some humping going on here so I guess we've got some hormones going springtime but no babies on this farm anymore so all right guys we're gonna go check in I've got to go run around and fill everybody's waters make sure they're set for the weather and uh, I think we'll say goodbye at the pigs how's that hey Jimbug she's like don't disturb me while I'm eating mom hi Junie and we're gonna brush her and put her harness on all right we're back out Filling waters is what the sound you hear. And the boys are just back to eating. This hen is the wise hen of the crew. Hi, Johnny. And she's just going around and cleaning up after them. As is Johnny. What you doing, Johnny? So, I guess that's it for today. Johnny, you gonna come say hi? Of course. He loves it when I'm filling the water bowl. Hi. Pigs drinking is a very odd thing. So dainty about it. He loves it. He loves it. Now he'll probably try to dump it. But All right, guys. Okay. As always, those animals. They all make me smile in such different ways. And sometimes... Not smile so much, <laughs> but most of the time they make me smile, which is why I have so many animals because obviously I find joy in taking care of them, right? So, um, okay, we're moving on to kind of knitting what I've been working on because there's not a big grass seed farm update. Everything is fertilized. That took maybe two, three weeks. Everything's fertilized. The weather worked with us pretty well. You kind of have to, ideally, you're doing it on a dry day with rain coming because you want the rain to make the fertilizer going. So um, we are done fertilizing, which is great. Um, and next is gonna be some planting of some grasses. And that'll be, I think, in May, I believe. So the grass seed farm is, we're like, it's like a little hold pattern a little bit as the guys just kind of do maintenance stuff and get ready for harvest. So um, we just hope for more sun and rain, sun and rain, sun and rain, definitely rain. Um, so things I'm working on. Okay, I totally forgot the one thing at home because I finished something. Oh my gosh, wish. Whew. All the animals everywhere in my life are blowing hair. I'm sure that's probably happening for lots of you too. Um, I forgot, but I finished my socks. So next episode, I'll have them. If you're on social media or anything like that, I've showed them off, but I'll have them here next time. And in the meantime, I told you guys, I think I'm becoming a sock knitter because I was so excited to finish them so that I could cast on the next sock. So... I have, um, here's my next socks. Oops, and I didn't, of course I didn't actually finish. So I'm doing two at a time again, you can see, and I am in the middle of knitting between the two of them. And this looks terrifying, but it's not. Um, I wrote a little thing about knitting two at a time in my last newsletter. So if you're not in the newsletter, and I had a bunch of links that were great YouTube links to go to if you are intrigued about doing two at a time socks. There's lots of great places on YouTube. Um, let me know if you're not. I think I just stabbed her <laughs> with the needle. Not stabbed, but you know. I've got needles hanging anywhere, everywhere. So anyway, onward. Okay, these are the rye light socks by tin can knits this is using our prime vill yarn and i am doing this a little different so my last socks i knit on a needle size one and a half which i can't remember what that pattern called for but it was a really nice fabric because always keep in mind about your fabric right even if the if the if you're on gauge like look at your fabric and say do i like this i, I didn't used to do that when i knitted for a long time it didn't occur to me that i had control over how the fabric was going to turn out so if you feel like the fabric's too tight you know take that into account or too loose beyond just what the gauge says right so anyway this pattern called for i think it called for a one to cast on and tin can knits if you haven't knitted tin can knits pattern they're fabulous this is actually part of their 
like beginning learn to knit series and it's a sock pattern so you can do it and they have so many links to tutorials they explain everything so well so um i'll put links in the show notes to this but so rylight um so it called for a one for the ribbing and then has you switch to a two which is pretty big that's my style for a sock and my last ones i knit on a one and a half so i cast on in the one and a half and then I switched to the two, which might be a little bit loose, but I mostly just was playing with the yarn and wanted to see, and I do really like the fabric that it's making on the size two. It is making me think how cute of a pair of mittens the Prime Bell yarn would knit up, um, or even a sweater if you did it maybe on a three. So knitting a sweater on size two is not my idea of fun, but for some of you it is. So anyway, idea. So now I'm just, cruising around and basically you're just knitting and doing like a section of purl in the front so there'll be a little bit of a pattern to it um, but it's just purl and knit opposite on this little chunk of the front of the sock so anyway moving on so exciting that's all I have on the needles except for that one shawl that we don't talk about I actually took the bag to have with me somewhere and um, I still didn't pick it up but I maybe we'll finish that shawl so I'm working on what am I gonna knit next I'm hand spinning a lot so I'm trying to build up anyway I'll figure out what I'm I gotta get something else on the needles because we're going on a trip here in about a week and I need to have something else on the needles let's face it um, otherwise I think most of you know you probably panic so that's gonna be our giveaway question I just thought of it okay um, okay, so what else am I doing? I said I'm spinning a lot. So last episode I showed you the Shetland I was spinning, really dark brown. I finished the second bobbin. It's ready to ply, so I'm ready. I'm excited. Other thing, in the last episode I showed you a Halsey that I had dyed in the wool. It was in roving. There's one four ounce ball of it left in case you fall in love right now. So I took four ounces home because I just couldn't not. So this was like um, blue and green and brown and a smidge of white. Wool alpaca silk. And um, so here's what's fun about this. I think for most of us that are hand spinners, we have a default, right? This is the, like I tend to default to spinning a basically a DK two ply DK weight yarn, which is wonderful. I don't mind it. There's a bazillion patterns in DK weight, but and if you're a new spinner, everybody always says this, when you first start spinning, you're like spinning like this bulky, all sorts of sizes and weights. And, and everybody always says it's really hard to get back to that. It is, once you start to spin a thinner yarn on your spinning wheel, it's kind of hard to get back to spinning like a bulkier weight yarn. So I decided to accept my own personal challenge and I wanted to make this heavier than I wanted to play with my whorls basically on my wheel um, so this is heavier than what I usually spin I think this is about double the size of what I usually spin and I when I first started I was like what the heck Kim just go with the wheel go with the wheel don't try to fight it what happens is we default to how much we generally well, I do long draw, so I default to about how far I generally pull out, how many tricks. So anyway, I decided I was gonna challenge myself. And the way that I found to actually spin what the wheel wanted me to spin and not what I was conditioned to spin was to count. Not like intense counting, but I noticed that when I generally spin my default yarn, I put about nine when I pull back, I put about nine twists or nine treadles worth of spin into that yarn. This, I put four. So significantly less because I'm spinning a bulkier yarn. It doesn't need as much twist to stay together. So I thought, well, that's a simple way to kind of just reprogram a little bit. So I didn't necessarily count through spinning all of this, but I did count to sort of get in the, and as you're counting, it's sort of amazing that you're counting, not necessarily realizing that you are actually counting the treadles. You're counting how many times you do a round on your wheel. 
So, super fun. I think I'm gonna do a quick video so you can see what I'm talking about. We'll cut to that. Um, and then you can really get an idea of what I'm talking about. But it's kind of a new uh, a challenge. Also, this I spun up, I probably spun two ounces in like an hour. Okay, I spin long draw, so it is significantly faster, generally speaking, than spinning short forward or different ways. But um, amazing, if you spin a bulkier yarn, you're using more fiber, you know, for, for it. And so you go through the fiber faster. I was like, maybe I need to spin more heavier weight yarn. So anyway, on that note, I'm going to stop. I'm going to do a, just a quick little demo on what I'm talking about as far as counting with spinning. And then I'll be back and we'll carry on. Be back in a minute. Okay, so what I'm going to show. Okay, so, okay guys, so I just wanted to show you. So I have got, on my wheel, I actually adjusted down one. So that means my wheel is gonna be turning faster, meaning therefore I'm going to get a heavier yarn than what I usually spin for. And the reason I'm playing with my, my whirl options, my drive band options, is because I always like to have my scotch tension at zero when I start a bobbin. That way, because I think I've mentioned before, when I spin for a big project, I don't spin it all at once. Like I'll start spinning, start the project, keep spinning. Because in my head, I just can't spin all the yarn once. So I always like to have my bobbin or my scotch tension at zero when I start a new bobbin. Uh, so I'm not trying to figure out where I was as far as the tension on this. So I've got this up a little bit higher than where or a little bit lower, however you want to look at it. So what I usually would spin is I would keep, and you can see, oop, not break my thing there, and I would keep going and going and going and going. And usually about nine treadles was where my default yarn was coming back to here. So now that I've got this new thing, what I'm doing is working on one, sorry, I've got to get my hand in the right place, three, four, and letting the wheel this is not the best fiber maybe to show, but you can see I'm just doing, and when I say one, two, three, four, my feet are matching it. So it's mostly the reason that I am counting a little bit, and I didn't do it through the whole thing because I got into a rhythm, but I was trying to break the rhythm I have of just going and going and going and going. And the easiest way for me to do it was to sort of count, okay, when I get to four, and I'm not putting a lot of twisting because it's a heavier yarn, when I get to four, it's just being mindful basically. And it broke my routine and it made me think about what I was spinning versus just defaulting. And once I got into a little pattern with it, I was able to just clear my head like most of us can do when we're spinning. But it was breaking that initial habit of this is how I spin, this is how I draw back. Same goes for if you're doing short forward, I, you know, you're, you're going to, let's see if I can do it guys. You're just going to not hold off so much, right? Where I might be, sorry, am I even spinning short forward? There we go. But the big thing is too, you're letting the wheel take the fiber, right? But when you're spinning heavier yarn, you don't need so much twist. So don't keep it on, don't hold on to it so long. Let the wheel take it up faster, what it's naturally doing as you're adjusting those whirls. So, okay guys, I hope that helps. Feel free to ask any questions. I'm gonna stop spinning short forward now, if that's even what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, see you in a minute. Okay, I hope that made sense. And like I said, at the time of this filming, there is one of these left. So if you are in love with this color, as I am, save me and get it before I bring it home also. Um, okay, spinning that, spinning that. I was gonna show you, because I think this is the giveaway. And this is a pretty fun giveaway. So also in last episode, I talked about this, I was spinning. So this is Blueface Lester in a natural gray. This is the hand spun. I can't remember how many yards it is but it is next to skin soft. It's got a little texture to it. It's not the 100% even, 
none of my yarns are 100% even. If you know me by now, I'm like, whatever. But it is stunning. So I think it's going to be the giveaway. And since we're talking about it, everything, and I am remembering what I just decided the giveaway question was gonna be, it is when you go on a trip or you are planning something relaxing away from your home, how many projects do you bring with you? And if you are doing something that is not knitting crochet, that is not portable, just comment anything. It's fine. Just comment about whatever you want in the world. I don't care. Just enter if you want to win this beauty. Um, but if you are somebody that takes projects with you on the go, how many do you usually take? Like you're going away for the weekend. How many projects do you take? Generally speaking, I think most of us take way more than we're ever possibly going to work on, but it's nice to have the options. Or if you want to cast something on, it's nice to have the stuff with you, right? Um, and how many times do you get somewhere and you're like, I don't have the needles. Anyway, giveaway, enter by next Tuesday per the usual. Tell me how many projects is normal for you to take? If you're only a one project at a time person, then it's easy. But anyway, join, uh, comment. I look forward to reading what you guys say. It's so fun for me to read your comments. I love it. I feel like I am getting to know so many of you just through the comments that way. So, um, okay. That's it. Okay, so moving onward. We've talked about the giveaway. I think we're at what's going on at the mill. You guys, this is actually going to be a normal length vlog. Oh my gosh, because, sorry, my washer. I'm working on fiber club and it's I'm just finishing up the washing and I have a set amount I have to wash every day to be able to pump it out to you guys so um, I'm very excited we're gonna talk about fiber club next time but I will tell you I have not worked with this fiber before and it's very different okay so let's talk about what's going on at the mill So let's talk about what's going on at the mill. I really wish did not like my knitting needles touching her. Apparently she's out of my lap. Okay, so what's going on at the mill is a lot of carding and I and a lot of skirting. Whew. So, oh, actually, before I forget, we're working on a new pattern. And yet again, I am not making the pattern, but I am encouraging the pattern designers that I know or the new pattern designers that I know to actually write that pattern down and let's go for it. So we're working on a new one. It's in the Halsey yarn also and it is at the tech editor right now. I will give you a, a I'll let you know it's a hat. So and it's Maggie is the designer and it's so pretty. It's so pretty. She's she didn't I can't it's really pretty. So um, that's going on. So, you know, probably in another month or so, we'll let that go out into the world. But it has to go through a few stages. After it goes to the tech editor, we do the edits that we, you know, I send the edits to Maggie. We go through them, see if, what we want to change. And then it gets sent off to the person that does a lot of the design work for my website and everything. And she now, uh, whether she loves it or not, is now helping design what the pattern layout looks like. And she did a really beautiful job on Wendy. So, um, Anyway, that's kind of how that's going. So hopefully we'll have another pattern for you all soon. Um, so I've been skirting a lot on the farm tour. I'm going to show you guys my skirting table because if you've been with me for a while, you know that that thing is a beast. I'm not going to say all my wool is on it, but you guys, it's amazing how clear, like you can see over the skirting table. It's insane. So I've been skirting like a fiend. Uh, I skirted up finally the last of the Shetland I had from fall of our Shetlands I skirted all the fiber club wool that just came through it showed up in the mail I skirted hardcore got stuff cleaned up I've been skirting I've just been skirting so I'll do some more skirting videos for you guys soon when I'm not quite so rushed trying to get through the skirting but doing a lot of that I've been carding like crazy so I have some things to show you um, like I said we'll talk about fiber club next time but basically, I should say I'm doing all the skirting because it's spring, which means fleeces are fresh coming off of animals, mine and all the shepherds around me. Like tomorrow, I'm going up for a wool buy. So um, I gotta make room, I gotta make room. And it also doesn't help any of us if it's just sitting in bags in my shop versus being washed, processed and out there for you all. So I'm working on it. 
Okay, first thing on the carter that I'm gonna show you off the carter. So this went out on social media, then it was gone. So I saved some for you guys. And so this is a very beautiful Shetland alpaca. So if you've ever spun my weather Andy, my Shetland weather Andy, he's in here and he's a really light oatmeal color. I'll put a picture of him up. Um, I've had him forever and accidentally ended up with him. But so this I blended with a dark reddish brown fawn alpaca. It's about 75.25. So there's a few of these left. And they're up there for you guys. So go get them. It's gonna spin up gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So, and you guys know Shetland alpaca is like my jam, my jam. Okay, so that's up there. Then another thing I did was I, I um, carted up Patrick, who is one of my 2021 lambs. I'm gonna put a picture of him up when he was fresh out. And this is actually the sheep that I pulled, the only sheep that I had to pull of my lamb and girls. And um, he's fine, he obviously was fine, but I want you to see what he looked like when he came out. And now I want you to see what his fiber looks like. Isn't that crazy? He was so dark, so dark when he came out. I mean, he was black, he was a black lamb. This is what he turned into. This is very common with Shetlands. That first, whatever they come out with and their first fleeces, it's gonna be the brightest colors that they've got and then they change out. So he is a pretty solid gray in there. It's stunning. It is going to be next to skin. It's his very, it's six months. It's not even his year fleece. So this is six months off of him. And actually I have some locks that I'll have to grab and show you. So there are just a few of these. It's very hard for me <laughs> to let go of my, my fleeces. It's really hard, especially my lamb fleeces, especially the one that I help pull, right? But I like to share it with you guys too. So I kept a little bit of it and I'm putting a few bumps out there for you guys also. So this is on the website. I would run for both of these because it's worth running for. Um, hold on just a sec. I'm gonna go grab his locks. Okay, so I just wanted to show you his locks because they were so pretty and they really highlight so well a how different Shetland can be from part to part. So here's two different chunks of him and you can see the tips have a little bit of brown. This one is a little bit and you can see how gray that one is. And this one really highlights that kind of dark tip that was on there. But that, I mean, and it bleaches out because of the sun. So that that's kind of just the end of where he was born, bleached out. And then look at how different it is. It's a beautiful, he's beautiful. He really is. And he's like one of my sweetest boys. He's so funny is what he is. And he doesn't break out. There's so many great qualities in him. But anyway, so there's Patrick. There's Patrick, if you're interested. Go grab it. I don't have too much more. Actually, I do have a few more fleeces. They're all skirted out and I just have to, I kind of just have to find time to pop them in between other stuff that I'm trying to process. So um, there are a few more lamb fleeces that I'll try to get out in the next month or two. Oh my goodness. I think that's all the stuff I have to share here. I am going to stop here and let you watch some mill videos. And then I'll be back to say a quick goodbye. So I'll see you in just a minute. Okay guys, so we haven't been back to the wash area in a while. And I'm just doing some random washing this week. Well, not really random because I decided I was gonna process it. But, um, so this is Andy. This is my Shetland weather. If you have ever spun him, he's amazing. It's really beautiful. He's kind of an, it ends up being a bit of an oatmeal color. And this is his, I don't know why I still have it, but it is his spring, spring, oh my gosh, 20, 21 fleece. And then below it, so those are the top, and I'm about to blend that with some fawn alpaca. And then I'll just go into roving. And then down here, this is still a little damp. But this is Patrick, and I'll put a picture of Patrick up as a baby because this is his first, this is his six month fleece, so a six month shearing. 
first wool off of him. You can see there is some dark stuff in there. It's it's darker than, well, it's kind of a nice gray color and then it's got pops of this dark in it. Um, it, let me kind of grab a little chunk so you can see a, there's a nice staple there. Uh, anyway, I'm going to, I thought I would just show you guys this. So I think this will go up. I won't be blending this. This will just go up if it goes up. <laughs> If I can let go of it, um, it'll go up just as Shetland roving, no blending. And anyway, I wanted to show you a picture of him because he was black when he came out. And so it's, you can see even just in that first six months, how much he lightened up and the tips are darker, but they're not even black anymore. So it's just interesting. So anyway, um, that's it. I just wanted to take you for a quick little walk over to the drying rack so you could see some of the buttes coming out. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay guys, so we are inside the carter. I'm gonna show you the fiber in a minute. But I was going to get this set up. You can kind of get a bird's eye view. I'm just feeding the coil through or the wire through that will sorry about my arm getting away so it's fed all through the roving deck and you can see a little bit of it is sticking out here so now I am going to attach it here so this is just what's come with the first little bit that's come off the carter and I'm going to try not to make you guys dizzy as I shut this and I'll put a band on it that you won't be able to see, but I'll do that in a second. I thought I'd show you what we're working on here. So if this makes your heart beat faster. This is my weather Andy, which if you've spun him before, he is spectacular. I don't even know how I still have this spring fleece from 21, but somehow I did because I didn't shear him in the fall. So anyway, so here he is blended. So he's a really light oatmeal color. You can kind of, this is some of him right here. Blended with, believe it or not, only 25% or so of this really super dark fawn alpaca. So I'm going to put you guys on hold for a sec and then um, let you see how it comes out. And we're going to put this into bumps so it's going to come out of here and then eventually we're going to line it up there but just a sec okay we're set up again so band is on i'm going to hit the play button and we're going to pull here I'm try not to be in the way so here comes this and i'm going to let it run for just a minute before we up. I like to get the roving just a little bit thicker. I don't think I've ever blended him with something this dark, so it's going to be, oh my, it's going to be nice. And I've saved some for you guys. I'm sure I've already shown it, but all right, I'm going to pause you for just a sec and then we'll all be right back. Okay, so here we are. Hi. Uh, I am going to break some of this off and we're basically just feeding it up through there. So we're going to Pull some of this through and wrap it underneath here. And I use just a little tape just to kind of keep it there. And then most importantly, we're going to turn the button on that makes this move back and forth, which is very important in making this work. So I think we're set. a little. Oops, wrong way. Sorry, guys. Oh my goodness. So there it is. It is beautiful. Woo. Okay. See you guys in a minute. Okay, guys. More Shetland. So this is my lamb, Patrick. And this is his lamp fleece, his six month fleece even, not even a year, six months. And it is stunning and it is oh so soft, definitely next to skin. Let's go around, we're putting this up into bumps. Let's see 
it. It's got some nice little grays in there, a little bit of a cream color to it. It's just really, really, really gonna be hard for me to let go, but I'm letting a few go for you guys. So get them while you can, because I don't think you'll be sorry. Okay, back to it. Okay, so we're here in the spinning room. I'm getting ready to spin some white Halsey Romney Alpaca Silk Blend. And I wanted to show you a tornado. This is what we call a tornado. So you can see this little, see if I can. And if I, I don't know if I can do it one handed, but I basically can pull this out and stretch it. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So I pulled it out and I just stretched it out. Basically what happens is that the fibers get pinched and so they cause this little buildup and then and it just doesn't spin well. And you can see another one right there. This was actually because it was a different reason, but a lot of times this happens because the fiber length is such that it is getting pinched too much between the rollers and it can't just slide through. Same as with your hand spinning and your holding on to both ends of the staple when you're hand spinning. And by that, I mean, you know, the staple length of a fiber. If you're holding on to both ends of it, it's not going to be able to travel through these rollers, right? It's being pinched in there. So it gets pinched and then it just shoots out a little bunch of it as it loosens up. And that's called a tornado. So I, right now I am doing a batch of Romney that was longer. It was easily six inches, which is kind of the max of what I like to spin. So a couple things, and I can tell, I'm not sure if I have it on here still, but I started to do a sample on here and it started to tornado right away. So what I've already done is I've already moved this back bar. Let me pull out a little bit. This back bar I've already moved back and then I move the roller back to correspond so it lines up on top like so. So I had already done that. I ran a little batch, got tornadoes. Okay, stop. So the next thing I can do is I look at these adjustments here, which loosen up the tension over these bars, over these rollers. So up here, I have it on the loosest, so it allows the fibers a little bit of slippage. This is on a medium, this is on a heavy. So I could adjust this to allow for more slippage so that the rollers aren't so tight and those longer fibers can slip through. Before I do that, for some reason, another thing I was doing was I had, we have these little clips on here. So these tell, not tell, they keep, when I put this down, you'll be able to see a little bit better. So they keep a little distance here between these two bands where the fiber is traveling through. So that, right now, I put green ones on there. And let me walk back here and I'll grab one of each so you can see, hopefully, what for some reason, and I'm not sure why, and some of it is just because of how I started spinning this wool and it's been a while and now I've learned more and I could switch things up, but, so before, I had a little black distance clip and now I put a green one on. And you can see the difference. Let me see if I can stand this one up for you. See how much more space that's gonna give than this one gave. So it's gonna allow for a little bit more slipping in here. So that's what I've done. If that doesn't work, which I think it will, the next thing would be to change out maybe this. The other thing I can change out, and we've talked about all this before, but because some people are new, I thought, let's do it again. Another thing I can switch out is, sorry guys, I keep having to walk over here. Oops. I have these, which are all different. And see how different the, the uh, widths are in between that. So those go right in here. And they also allow, you don't really want this, so the thicker of a yarn you're spinning, the wider the gap is gonna be in the one of those you choose. So, but I think I'm okay there. So uh, I ran a quick test batch, it was looking much better. So I'm going to line the rest of this up and then we're gonna see how it spins. So we'll see you in a minute, fingers crossed. <music>
You know what's funny, you guys? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that mill tour. Or, and like I said, I'm just throwing together clips. It's the best way for me to get all the stuff I do back there, or at least a good chunk of the stuff I do back there in for you guys to see and to be able to share it with you. What's funny, I was going to say, is that when I say I'll be back in a minute, I hit the pause button or I hit the stop button on my video, that's what I do. I literally sit there for like 30 seconds, almost every time, and I'm like, wait, I don't actually have to wait because I'm playing something for them. Anyway, there's a little behind the scenes. Okay, so guys, that's it. That's it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed it. Next time, I am going to have my socks with me, and we're going to talk about Pygora. And I was gonna talk about it here, but I, and I write a grocery list of everything to bring. I forgot like everything I was going to, um, talk about. I forgot cuddle bugs fiber. I forgot de-haired fiber. I forgot yarn. It was just a hot mess. So I was like, Meh, we'll do it next time. So next time you have uh, that to look forward to that we'll talk about Pygora and we will use Cuddlebug the goat as our example. So anyway, until next time, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and be kind to your neighbors, stay healthy and make so many pretty things and feel free to share them with me and don't forget to subscribe comment like enter the giveaway thank you guys for watching